Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the physiology of a normal menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle has three phases. First phase will be the proliferative phase, where the endometrium uh, cells start dividing, followed by the phase of ovulation, where ovum is released into the peritoneal cavity, followed by the secretory phase where the endometrium becomes spongy and secretory type so that it's preparing itself for implantation if a pregnancy occurs basically there's a lot of hormonal regulation going on in the menstrual cycle the first hormone that comes into picture will be the gnrh or gonadotrophin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus this gnrh is secreted in pulses and GnRH released from hypothalamus stimulates the anterior pituitary to release two hormones FSH that's follicular stimulating hormone and LH that's the luteinizing hormone this FSH acts on the ovary and then it has an important step of causing the development of follicles it doesn't just uh, cause development of one follicle it causes development of more than one like many follicles all at once but then out of all these follicles only one of the follicles becomes a dominant follicle there's a process of uh, something called as process of selection that occurs this dominant follicle becomes dominant follicle because it has slightly higher number of fsh uh, fsh receptors and hence it becomes dominant now this dominant receptor starts producing estrogen uh, under the influence of fsh this fsh acts on the uh, granulosa cells of the dominant follicle and produces more estrogen this dominant follicle has another function that is it has to kill the other follicles it kills the others so that it's the only one that survives and releases the ovum now how does it do that the estrogen which is synthesized by the dominant follicle has a negative feedback mechanism on the gnrh and because of that the gnrh levels fall once gnrh level falls simultaneously the fsh levels also fall and falling fsh levels cause atresia of the other follicles and because of that they die or they disintegrate but if falling fsh levels can cause atresia of these follicles how does it not affect the dominant follicle the thing is that the dominant follicle saves itself by producing more number of fsh receptors on its surface and because of that whatever little amount of fsh is present on it acts on the dominant follicle helps it grow and then produces more and more estrogen once that is done the maximum level of estrogen is reached by day 12 of the cycle at this step maximum level of estrogen will suddenly cause stimulation of the hypothalamus only at that step and then there will be surge there will be sudden surge of gnrh rise and because of that there will be something called as lh surge there will be sudden bout where the lh will increase and this lh surge is important for causing ovulation ovulation basically occurs from the surface of the ovary if this is the ovarian surface over the follicle which is present here reaches the surface and then releases the ovum by the process of necrobiosis all that is left will be a secondary ovum the first polar body which is formed by the first meiotic division the remaining granulosa cells and theca cells which are present will form another structure that is called as corpus luteum now as the name itself suggests luteum it's yellow in color this corpus luteum has a endocrine function because it secretes the next important hormone that's the progesterone now this progesterone is kind of like the pregnancy hormone why this progesterone mainly acts on the endometrium and because of that the endometrium becomes more spongy more edematous 
and the vessels which were straight initially under the uh, influence of progesterone become more dilated and they also become corkscrew like basically it's increasing the vascularity to the endometrium it's preparing the endometrium in case a pregnancy happens the embryo has to implant now this is the function of endometrium uh, sorry progesterone now this corpus luteum does not stay forever it can stay max to max for about 7 days so once if pregnancy does not occur at this step then what happens this corpus luteum disintegrates and it forms a structure called as corpus albicans as the name suggests it is white in color and because of that there will be sudden fall in progesterone levels and when progesterone levels fall the endometrium can't sustain this vasospasm occurring and because of that the endometrium undergoes necrosis and it sheds once it sheds it leads to menses that is menstruation so that will be the end of a normal menstrual cycle hope this video was useful thank you so much for watching